brilliant guy. And I don't know anybody who has more stories than George Kahnemann. Every life you touch, it may be a petal in a flower, and the more flowers you make, the more beautiful your lay becomes. Well, George's lay is worldwide now. E ho mai kai ki mai luna mai e O na me au na nu ya o na mili E ho mai E ho mai E ho mai kai ki mai luna mai e O na me au na nu ya o na mili The life was uh, a lot simpler in Kelia, you know. Um, our life was farming and fishing. Strolling along on the shore of Kealia. We'd sit down in like a big family. Basically, it was the sharing of time. Ohana and my grandmother would tell stories about Pele, Kamapua, you know, the legends that came before us. And it was like every night, though. Music was always pretty big. Um, and just as we are now, I was always sort of the business schemer guy, and George was always the entertainer. And for one three-minute song, I made $27.10. I work in one month at Lippius Spindas, you know what I mean? So at the young age of 11 years old, I had to make a decision. Wash more cars or play more music. I was always drawing if not on the sand or with charcoal and pieces of paper or whatever, or pencil, then, then I, I was always into three-dimensional. The title is called Ekomomai, which means to come inside. I did it in 1972. It's, it's really a, a piece of aloha. That's what it really is. My brother Moses wanted to start entertaining. So we ended up playing gigs all over the place. I ended up, we were known as the Kahumoku Brothers. We'd always go every evening down to my cousin Michael Nahi's place and we'd just jam and play a lot of uh, Sons of Hawaii music and stuff. And that's what kicked it off. I don't call it only farming. I think it's more like um, being sustainable. This is, I'm cleaning all this. This is how the place looked like when I first came back. But look, look how they had to cut you. And you don't want to cut on top. You just want to cut so you can get, get out of here. <laughs> when you first approached George's farm, you saw the animals and the plants, and everything worked together like it should be. I traveled around the country looking at all these different hog facilities, and the, the biggest thing that they had was with groundwater. And the place smelled like, you know, smelled really bad, so I figured there gotta be a better system. It was newsworthy. And, and people wanted to go see. It was genius. I gotta hand it to George, you know, to get his students to pull weeds on his property uh, is a pretty, uh, that's a pretty Tom Sawyer kind of a thing he's got going there. It's very surprising how, how many people are willing to, to uh, garden at, at six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Suddenly I realized I was expected to join in and that would mean getting dirty hands. It wasn't just out there doing, doing manual labor, that he was teaching me about the, the Hawaiian culture and the aina, the land, um, and that he was, was giving me the history of the music. Uncle's energy is everywhere. The, the energy he puts into the land, you walk here, you feel it. You know, and uh, anybody that comes here feels that, then they take it and they go somewhere else and it, and it, and it grows. I think when George is around vegetables, trees, native plants, he's among friends. And animals. Yeah. With a horse whisper. All the students that come, even the little kids up to the, you see the best of them that comes out. And that's my goal. It, it isn't the ukulele lesson or the guitar lesson or anything. It's just putting them in, more in touch with something that's, that's the, the real you, you know, the real the spirit of who you are. George was selling me herbs and so forth. And then, you know, I think one time they mentioned, oh, we play over at the Mauna Kea Beach Hotel. I believe that's where they were playing at the time. I'm, oh, that's cool. I wonder if these guys are any good. Hello. <laughs> and a big break came when we recorded with Anti Idis Kanaka Ole, and we won our Hawaiian Album of the Year. He couldn't find anyone to help her do her album, so we volunteered to talk about um, Mana. Boy, when you work with a lady like that, it's just, just wonderful. We just came out here to swim at Hapuna Beach. I knew that lobster season started on, on September the 1st. The sun started to rise, I see the 
the badges that says George Kawahui under arrest for trespassing. And the worst thing of all is that I didn't even get to eat one of those lobsters. <laughs> and because of that law, every single beach on this island has public access. And I was young, like 27 with cancer, and that was the turning part of my life. You just see it in my brother's facial expressions when I go visit him in the hospital and stuff. Here I get a call in the morning, it's my tutu. She says, in six weeks you will be cured. You're actually cured already. So I get kind of chicken skin telling you about that much. I'm used to, to a really full life. So here I am playing at the West End from three to five in the afternoons, and then from six to nine, and then from 11 to one, two in the morning. But I got from two in the morning till three in the afternoon. I'm George Kahumoku. I, I actually helped to start this school way back in 1975. We had canoe building, halal building, the old style, stonewall building. And our curriculum was surfing, hunting, and fishing. That was our main curriculum at that school. I've seen him help people that never thought they would ever go back to school again and inspire them for themselves to help themselves uh, go back and get an education. I think the powers that be in the school knew that they had a rare, rare person in George. There was one particular day when nobody was learning, and on that day, uh, my buddy was killing chickens. I remember seeing a bunch of feathers laid on the floor over here in that sink right there. And then a few minutes later, I smelled chicken cooking on a grill. And I was just like, no. Then it turned into lunch class, you know what I mean? So this whole classroom would always be filled with 30, 40 kids. Look what they did because they recorded all those concerts. And look what happened to Hawaiian music. These are huge things in the story of, the, of Slack Key and how, and getting it out there to all the rest of us so that we can all be a part of this, this profoundly moving and beautiful music. We started recording Moses about 1993. And Moses kept saying, he's got to do my brother George. I said, I know we're going to, we're going to, I want to. We started doing George about 1995. You can have 10, 12 string players line up. You can blindfold me and I can tell George's style. He incorporates a lot of uh, his own stylings of hammer-ons and slurs and slides and stuff. And, and uh, I know one thing, when you hear George playing, you know it's him playing. You know, to watch George play, to is very, very Hawaiian from the cultural aspect. Yeah, the musicality is just fantastic. George, um, probably of all the Hawaiian artists that, that we've worked with, is the most um, open to trying other musical experiences. We'd be on the road, say, in Oregon, and there'd be a, a bagpipe player, and you would think, bagpipes and slap key, maybe you don't. Not for Uncle George, no. <laughs> that didn't stop you. <laughs> so it just so happened we went on a radio station. George goes, wow, we just passed some really nice cactus out there in the desert. So that night at the show, <laughs> we opened the show and then George goes, wow, Dennis, check out the front row. And I went, wow, there's a lot of guys in uniform out there. And it was all a forestry service. Yeah, okay, good, good. When we play together, we, we just have fun. When you enjoy one another, the music gets stronger and the, the, um, the, the love among us get, you know, the bond is strong, yeah. George's name is Kahu Moku. The Kahu is one who cares for many, many, many people. Moku is a district. So, you know, in that name is the history of that behavior. Whenever he had something that was going for him that was good, he wanted us to see it to show us that, hey, you guys can do this too. You know, and that's the blessing that he gave on to me by hanaiing me into his family and giving me the gift of music. He's worked with everybody in Hawaii, and they want to work with George. I think it's because he's a great musician, but I also think it's because he is the Renaissance man. A lot of my students want to learn slack here. But what I try to tell them that the, the, the music itself is only about 5% of the culture. The other part of the culture is, the, is that the sharing of aloha. Hey, Hawaii, uh, again, literally, it means I am Hawaii. Yeah, and to me, uh, George Kahumoho is Hawaii.